What is your best D&D story? I got kicked out of my first ever D&D game. Spent all day making a character, getting all their stats, learning the rules, etc. My friend who was the DM was kind of uptight, so it was very much a his way or the highway scenario. He lets me make the first move, since I'm a noob. We had just walked into a cave and the entrance had caved in. Screwing around, I said I wanted to stab the ceiling with my glaive in anger at being trapped to see if we could dig out. He glared at me and told me to roll. I rolled a natural 20 on my first ever D&D roll. The ceiling crumbled open, revealing sunlight and a way out. My friend threw down his little handbook and told me to get the fuck out and never come back. So that was the first and last time I ever played D&D. The party was hunting down this guy named Ferdinand who had betrayed them previously. They tracked into an old haunted house. It was actually the day before Halloween so I decided to get a bit festive. I planned for them to get through the haunted house where Ferdinand would be waiting at his office. He would say some somewhat cliche stuff to them, send some more ghosts at the party, and then flee. Eventually, he would have connected the party to a larger group that would become more significant later. Anyways, in the first room of the haunted house, the party gets attacked by a couple ghosts. Our barbarian isn't very smart and goes to attack one. He rolls to attack the ghost. First off, his axe is non-magical, so will likely miss regardless but then he rolls a 1 on the attack. As a bit of a colorful punishment, his axe goes through the pretty flimsy wall. I hadn't thought of this as being anything major until I realized that the lead baddie's office was designed to actually be on the other side of the wall. The player does actually decide to peek through the new hole and does see Ferdinand sitting behind his desk, casually preparing for them to show up. On the barbarian's next turn, he goes to tear down the wall and rolled incredibly well. Naturally, Ferdinand would have fled but the player came out between Ferdinand and his escape. Ferdinand died way sooner than expected, and I lost my smooth transition to introducing a new group that was against the PCs. I played a campaign in the mid-1990s. It was both the first and last one I ever did, but I had a blast. The DM was crazy into this stuff. He had all sorts of spreadsheets to calculate character info, which at the time felt pretty advanced. We played every Saturday for months, and it was pretty open-ended, but he definitely had an overall story going. One of the first things we found was a map. It wasn't really clear what the map was for, but it looked like a city. We carried that map around for weeks, often going back to trying to make something out of it without any luck. Finally one day, we're sitting by a campfire getting ready to sleep, and it just happened that one of our characters had the map out and was asking questions about it to the DM. He was being pretty cagey about it, but then he mentioned that something very subtle changed about it after the player sat by the fire. Suddenly we had an idea. Hold it up to the firelight. Nothing. I don't know. Hold it close to the fire, but not close enough for it to burn. It was at that point that he told us all to get up and let us down to his basement. There, there was an ironing board all set up with an iron. He turned it on, and to our total astonishment, ironed the map which had secret writing that appeared, telling us all sorts of secrets about the location of the city, entrances, trusted people to talk to, etc. All this time we had the answers in front of us written in lemon juice. We all cheered and congratulated him on his creativity. It was really amazing to be there for it as the mystery was solved. This was during a Pathfinder campaign. I was playing a level 5 half-elf ranger. We were heading to a town, because plot. But when we got there, a large ice wyvern was wrecking the place, also because plot. I, being the smart, nature-loving guy that I am, was able to determine that this ice wyvern was weak to fire damage. So I dipped my arrows in lamp oil and lit them on fire before shooting them at the wyvern. We were getting our asses handed to us. This wyvern was much stronger than anything we had faced beforehand. Our DM knew this, so he hid a few barrels of gunpowder in a building for us to find and use in battle. Our druid ran into one of the buildings and saw the gunpowder. The only problem is, in this world, gunpowder was not a widely known about invention. It was only just getting its start in this tiny village. There was a note next to the barrel that said, Caution! Highly flammable! Keep away from fire! The druid sees that I'm shooting flame arrows and comes up with a bright idea. The wyvern was directly outside the house he was in, so he opened a window and rolled the barrel directly under the wyvern's legs. He then shouts to me, Shoot it! Note, he's only five feet away from the barrel at this time. At this point, I pause the game. Me. Wait, my character has no idea what this barrel is, correct? GM. Yes, that is true. Me. So, my character has no idea what this will do and all he notices is a big barrel getting rolled out of a window with a familiar voice yelling at me to shoot it? GM. That is correct. 
Me. The Drew doesn't know what's about to happen either, right? GM. He has an idea, but he doesn't know how much danger he's in. Me. Okay then. To avoid metagaming, I immediately shoot a flaming arrow at the barrel. The shot hit the barrel, which then exploded. Our GM decided that the barrel will deal 10d6 damage and that the size of the explosion will be dependent on the amount of damage that was done. I rolled the d6s and managed to get 7 sixes, a 5, and 2 threes, for a total of 53 fire damage. We were level 5, so this is huge. The explosion turned out to be massive. Since the Ice Wyvern was weak to fire, he took double damage. The dragon got completely blown apart, sending body parts flying. The house the druid was hiding in also got completely demolished. The druid and his familiar were both blown into the wreckage and unconscious. There was also severe damage to many other buildings in the town. The town that we just tried to save is now completely in shambles. Quite a few villagers were dead or dying. We basically nuked this peaceful village. Rip little town, I'm so sorry. I'm playing with my first D&D group right now, and we recently made our way into an underground cave. We were in trouble as we had one boss hot on our heels, but had found the room we were looking for that held really powerful armor and a mace. The only problem was it was guarded by a spectator. Now, being the cleric, I tried to talk them out of fighting it, but they outnumbered me, so we got ready to fight. A few turns in, I'm already worried because this is going south fast. I decided to cast blindness on it, which usually isn't a great spell because it's easy to break and most creatures can overcome it, but I'm desperate and really want to know what happens when you blind a giant eyeball. I cast the spell, roll the dice, and it's effective. Then the spectator disappears. We're now freaking out. Sure, this is a super powerful attack tactic. We grab the magical items and stand in a very intense defensive circle, waiting for it to come back. It never did. Turns out, when you cast blindness on a giant eyeball, it automatically thinks the battle is over. Then just sort of leaves existence. And that's how I, a first time level 3 cleric, defeated a boss with a first level spell. My first campaign ever, we had a party of about six people, one of whom was playing a minotaur. He was incredibly strong, but very dull and clumsy. We were in a battle near a chasm against a mage who cast a fiery explosion that blinded the rest of our party, but not the minotaur, because on his previous turn, he headbutted an enemy, but fell flat on his face with a dexterity check. So one of our blinded mages managed to kill that mage and the last remnants of his minions. Our next step was to try to cross the chasm to get to a small town where we could restore everyone's vision. Unfortunately, a rickety bridge was the only way across. There was a sign at the edge of the chasm by the entrance to the building that seemed to be important. Unfortunately, because everyone was blinded, our thick-headed minotaur had to read it. He rolled a natural one. Our DM said, You fail to read the sign. The attempt itself makes you very dizzy. Roll for a dexterity check. He rolled another natural one and fell into the chasm. First time playing as a group, we're on a classic Save the Princess quest against a hyper-intelligent orc or kobold or something who was supposed to eventually be our arch nemesis for a pretty long campaign. I'm playing a chaotic neutral mage, pretty much the standard out for myself only character. We, being new players, were super broke, crap weapons, hardly any armor. We ended up going to a cave where we know the princess is being held. The very first room our DM is setting the mood, torches, footprints in the dust, a gold sarcophagus in the corner. As he is talking, I raise my hand and he stopped and looked at me expectantly. Is the sarcophagus golden or gold? Really? Whatever, it, it's gold. Anyways, uh, th there is an exit uh, to a... How much would you say the sarcophagus weighs? I, I don't know, like a couple thousand pounds, why? I asked around what everyone's max carry weight is, uh, we can carry it. We took the gold sarcophagus and abandoned the quest. Good guy GM didn't want to backtrack, so he allowed it. But the town we went back to was too poor to know what to do with thousands of pounds of gold. Since we couldn't spend it, we bought the town and imported the best craftsmen from other towns. Eventually, like five weeks later, we go back to the cave, decked out in literally the best armor money can buy. Pretty sure the princess was super dead by then. We played a few more games, but since we were newbies, we didn't really like the classes we originally picked, so we re-rolled. GM was a champ and allowed it but he kept the characters we abandoned. Our next session was like a hundred years later in the same world. Played a chaotic neutral halfling rogue this time, still a turd. We start in a massive city about to be sacked by an uber powerful necromancer and his undead and orc army. Being a total ass, I go over the wall and start turbo looting the dead bodies outside the wall from the previous skirmishes. 
The rest of the party has learned to just ignore me by now, but the DM sees an opportunity to get his revenge. He lets me find all this super epic loot, tells me to roll a perception check. Fail. Continue turbo looting and eventually hear noises. I turn around and see the army, and at the head of it is the necromancer. It was my old mage from the previous game, turns out he never became less of an asshat. I didn't notice the enemy army until they were within bow range, preventing me from going in the gate or climbing the wall. So I do the only thing I can think of. I tell the DM I want to roll to hide. He laughs at me because I'm on a battlefield with nowhere to hide. I rolled a natural 20. Ends the session by graphically describing my halfling rogue entering the anus of the corpse of an especially large orc. Too long did not read. Botched DM's campaign. But Epic DM made the best of it by making me play hide the halfling in an orc's anus. Compulsive liar, and I have convinced the rest of the party that I have the ability to detect lies. So whenever something comes up, they all look to me to figure out whether it's true or not. I roll every time like I'm detecting lies, but the rolls don't mean anything and I just make up whatever answer sounds fun at the time. So far it hasn't backfired and I'm kinda unofficially leading the party from the shadows. My party of five was exploring this abandoned underground city. Eventually we came to be chased by a horde of goblins. Too many to fight, think like 40-50 enemies, almost a small army. We had found a ladder and were escaping along the rooftops. We came to a point where we had to roll an acrobatics check to proceed. Myself and another member of our party wearing heavy armor miserably failed our checks. So now the party was split with three running across roofs and two of us running through the streets. After picking ourselves off the ground and tallying fall damage on our character sheets. We continue our run through the abandoned city with prompts from the GM of whether we wanted to go right, left, straight, at intersections, turn down hallways, etc. Eventually I ask the GM where we are and if we're still being chased. He informs us that we still hear some commotion in the distance, although it is further away than before, and we appear to be in some financial district. Now the smart move is to keep running, since we appear to be losing our pursuers, but this is D&D, so clearly we didn't go with the smart move. Me. Financial district? With like banks? GM. Yeah, sure, I guess. Me. I search the abandoned banks for a vault. GM. You're being chased by a small army and you want to rob this place? Me. It's, it's not robbery, it's abandoned. So eventually we find a bank vault after some in-game time. The vault is filled with coins which we stuff our bags with. As we're about to leave, the GM informs us that due to the time we wasted, we can now hear this horde just outside. So we needed to roll stealth rolls to stay hidden, alive. Now since we're both wearing heavy armor, we both had negative 8 or so modifiers to stealth rolls. My buddy rolls first and gets a nat 18, so a 10. Okay, so maybe if this horde is deaf, we'll make it, right? I'm up, die roll, and it's a natural one. We both rolled new characters that night. Too long did not read. Idiots tried to stealthily loot an abandoned bank while wearing heavy armor and being chased by a small army. The time our gnome paladin hooked up with an NPC because they impressed each other in battle. The setup. We arrive in a town escorting three NPCs. The only survivors after the village was sacked by orcs. The townsfolk are suspicious of us. A dragonborn, a dwarf, a gnome, and a tiefling in disguise in a town of vanilla humans. But the villagers vouch for us, and we hole up for the night in the church. The next day, a watchman comes running into the town with a dire announcement. More orcs are heading this way. Our team suits up and we help the townsfolk hide and the city guards prepare for battle. It's the four of us. Four guards, two of the villagers we escorted, and the mayor versus four orcs, one orog, and an orc eye of Grinch. Now, Viola, the gnome paladin is very proud of her five javelins and is thrilled to discover that one of the guards is also a javelin user. As he runs past Viola into the heat of battle, she calls after him, Wait, what's your name? At which point the DM, who had been naming all the NPCs up to this point, sheepishly admits, I forgot. We all have a laugh and we're ribbing the guard, the DM a bit. Nice to meet you, I forgot. But despite this, Mr. Javelin Guard more than distinguishes himself in battle by scoring not one, but two critical hits with his javelins. We immediately nickname him Crit. Viola swoons, but keeps her head in the game and scores a critical hit of her own. This does not escape Crit. The battle is won, the loot collected, the plot thickened. We all agree that it's time to take a long rest. Me. Is Viola going to be spending her long rest with Crit? 
tiefling. That depends. You're only allowed an hour of light activity. Is that going to be a problem, Viola? DM. Crit comes over to your group. He hands Viola one of his javelins into which he has carved his address. He also introduces himself. His name is I forgot. Me. Are you saying he critical hit on her? And that's how it came to be that our gnome paladin may or may not have begun a long distance interracial relationship. It's complicated, she says, but I have a feeling we'll be seeing Mr. Gott again. Baomi, a YouTuber who plays a ton of Dota 2, had a nice story about his Pathfinder session. Basically, he and his friends are all pirates with their own ship, doing pirate things, etc. While traveling, suddenly parts of the ocean freeze over, especially around the ship, and zombies and frost whites appear. Frost whites being creatures that you take cold damage when you touch or attack them, or when they attack you. Baomi is a melee guy with no ranged attacks whatsoever, so he does the only thing he can do from the ship, and decides to fire the cannons. Rolling a natural 20, he decapitates one of the frost whites with a cannonball, and it's a zombie, and the head is still alive cursing as it lies there while the body walks around aimlessly. Then, he gets an idea. He retrieves the head and mounts it on his quarterstaff through the neck hole. He's now walking around with what's basically a talking and cursing hammer that can freeze things and that deals blunt damage as well as frost damage. We once kept a vampire head alive in a case for a while, and we happened upon some paladins. The DM specifically told us they're not going to be okay with us carrying this vampire head. We'll be in some serious shit if we reveal this. One of our party just walks up to them and is like, just so you know, we have a vampire head. Everyone else just looks at him like, what the fuck? He thought that if we told them about the head, they would accept that we were handing it over and we would be rewarded for slaying a vampire. Well, as expected, they immediately destroyed the head, which contained valuable information, and imprisoned all of us. We had a half drow in the party who didn't always think things through. He started off as chaotic good, I think, and managed to give himself an alignment hit for murdering some prisoners who were chained up and sleeping. Then another one for kicking a person who I had already knocked out in a wizard fight club. And then later on in the campaign, we found a drow killing elven sword he wanted to give to some elves thinking they'd be grateful that he returned it and not killed him. One game day, when he was absent, the rest of us sold it so he wouldn't get his dumbass murdered by elves. A few months later, we bought him an ice cream cake IRL that said, Sorry we sold your sword. It starts with the Countess. They meet with her and my players ask how hot she is. I say it doesn't matter, but they press me. Out of 10? I roll a d10 and get a 3. As we are talking, the bard is visibly contesting a thought and rolls a d20. It was a natural 20. Automatic success. I don't see it, but the fighter does and calls him out on it. It went something like, Fighter. I saw that bard. Bard. What? Fighter. That role. That was a proposal role. Bard. Well, it was a diplomacy check, technically. Fighter. DM. He rolled it, you gotta count it. DM. Eh. Minotaur Barbarian. Count it! Count it! DM. You want me to count it, bard? Bard. M why not? I rolled the Countess's diplomacy roll in return. Natural 1. Automatic failure. My players hoot and get psyched. I tell the bard to confirm the roll. Roll again, maybe unjustified, but I knew what kind of chaos I might be letting loose. He rolls another natural 20. The table erupts as I describe how the Countess, absolutely flattened by his suave charisma, agrees to the marriage on the spot. The marriage happens. The player becomes a Count. Drinks are had and merriment occurs. The Minotaur Barbarian can't keep himself in check amongst humans, elves, and the like. He is smashing plates on accident, breaking wind, engaging in coarse discussion, and doesn't understand the concept of a waltz. There is a note I need to make about this Minotaur. His intelligence score was around 6. 5 is the minimum for sentience as we know it. He wasn't bright. By the player's own urging, he mandated will saves to not become distracted by shiny objects or fly into a rage at the slightest perceived insult. The Minotaur is escorted out by the newly appointed Count and Countess. Instead of sending him out completely, they send him to the stables. He finds some cows on the stables and tries to hit on them. He has horns, they have horns, loves in the air, he's very stupid, why not? Well, the animals do not understand concepts like Minotaur love and ignore him. 
The player rolls one of his customary, am I that stupid rolls, and finds he is, in fact, that stupid. He flies into a depressed rage and strikes one of the cows. However, the player did not anticipate how little HP a cow has and caves in its head in a single strike. This barbarian had the cleave feat, something he has used with gusto all campaign long. 3.5e rules, when you kill an enemy with an attack, you may deliver an additional attack to any target within your attack range. The player attempts another will save to rein in his emotions. He fails miserably. In his grief and rage, he falls back on old habits and cleaves a blow to another nearby cow, killing it instantly. The resulting havoc and fear from the rest of the cows draws the guards. The Count's first actions in his new authority is sending his friend to jail for animal cruelty. He bailed him out the next day. During this entire sequence, I merely narrated the events as they happened and did not meddle with events or their roles. The situation played out as D&D should be, by and for the players. It was magical and gut-wrenchingly hilarious. Too long did not read. By the will of the dice gods alone, a player unwittingly marries a countess, becomes count. His buddy gets arrested for murdering a bunch of bovines. Zero DM intervention involved. All right, folks. So what are some good D&D stories that you have? Why don't you, why don't you let us know in the comments below. Also, if you're still hungry for some more sweet D&D story gravy, uh, we have the link in the description to Thread Thrasher. Should have some more videos like this one in there if you want to give that a shot. And uh, if you like this, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. And uh, if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. Please, 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 please. And uh, man, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great day. I hope you have a great week. I hope you have a wonderful year. And uh, yeah, love you guys. See you later. Peace. Thank <laughs> you.